for a social heritage. In fact, we humans might be thought of as merely complex data processors and transmission units. The ability to exchange information among individuals or between different generations gives mankind a group identity that has facilitated our passage through evolution. It's more than likely that this amazing feature was the key, some 30,000 years ago, to the prevalence of Homo sapiens over Neanderthals. And of course it will continue to be the engine that drives man's dominance over the next several thousand years. What are we going to be like in the future? Will we have a larger head than we do now because our brain will be bigger? Or will our legs be shorter because of all the automatic features of future locomotion? Will our teeth disappear if we eat only concentrated food? There may come the day when we actually create our own version of human beings. Or maybe we'll create, as many prominent writers of science fiction have suggested, beings who are half human and half machine. There is certainly a wealth of fascinating ideas on the matter. Perhaps it was Aldous Huxley who, in his 1932 novel, A Brave New World, imagined the most feasible future reality for mankind. The plot describes a future world inhabited by beings genetically programmed to accept the role their society sets out for them. It's a frightening scenario in which freedom is on the fringes of organized civilization. For the time being, Huxley's sad world remains a harmless fantasy. But the possibility of manipulating the genome of living beings is certainly a shocking reality. According to Stephen Hawking, arguably the most famous living scientist in the world, mankind started controlling our evolution the day the sheep Dolly, the first cloned mammal, was born. From that moment on, the possibility of duplicating humans was just a question of time. Biogenetics is, in fact, one of the factors that will most affect how we define our immediate future. We can foresee some of the consequences, but others that we are not even able to imagine will undoubtedly occur. We already know how to predict the advent of diseases before they actually develop, and very soon we'll most probably have the means to prevent them as we live better, longer, more productive lives. The heart was the first human organ replaced with a man-made device. It's also true that the heart is the human organ that most often fails. However, recent experiments in bionics suggest that extremely practical solutions may be available in the very near future. In fact, at this point in time, it's practically inconceivable that there might exist a bodily dysfunction that will not lend itself to a bionic solution in the near future. Patients who today can only submit to uncomfortable dialysis treatments will have man-made kidneys that will unquestionably improve their quality of life. Among the most imminent bionic solutions are lungs, muscles, and capillary arteries that in a few years will be common. But the greatest challenge posed by bionics is designing devices to repair the senses, such as hearing or sight. Right now, there are man-made systems that can supply approximately 10 or 15% of a blind person's sight. But for now, 
These devices have only been successful in laboratory experiments. Designer Babies, Bionic Men and Women. The future of the human species certainly looks long and prosperous. We might improve our looks, we might live healthier lives, and we might live a whole lot longer. But will we become more intelligent? If we had asked that question 40,000 years ago, the answer might have been the same as it is today. Back then, our ancestors lived in caves and made stone weapons and tools. Today, we design intelligent buildings, use computers, and make missiles. But the origin of it all is in our brains. It is the same brain we had 40,000 years ago, and it will probably be the same brain we have 40,000 years from now. The fact is, it's not likely that natural selection is going to change us into smarter beings. The answer, once again, is somewhere inside us. Intelligence or any other function is an interaction between genes and environment. And so, um, in fact, it's a somewhat le less known fact that the average IQ has been increasing steadily for the last 100 years, ever since they started measuring it. But it is always normalized to the average in the population. So what does that mean? That does not necessarily mean genetic evolution, just too short a time frame. But as our environment changes and our ability to educate children and you know, provide new stimuli continues, there will be continuing changes. Uh, they can be improvements or not improvements depending on the situation and how you look upon it actually. Intelligence, a slow and detailed coincidence of nature that has allowed man to become lord and master of all that he sees. Despite the rampant social inequalities man has created within his own species, human beings in general have increased their life expectancy to remarkable lengths. We are such a plentiful species that we can practically inhabit any place on this planet, no matter how adverse the conditions. In order to establish and maintain this hegemony, we have naturally had to transform the world. And now we are not sure how the alterations we have made are going to affect our future. The ultimate purpose of any living species is to survive over time. Experts say that the average existence for any species is around four million years. Man is not even 200,000 years old yet. It's possible that the amazing mechanisms that came into effect some six million years ago and gave rise to human intelligence are now turning against us. We do not know very much about how we will evolve in the future. It's possible that the same intelligence that has defined us and helped us up until now will actually be the instrument of our ultimate demise, and that might come sooner than we think. Perhaps someplace in Africa, the species that will replace us is already well on the evolutionary road of development. There might be some kind of amazing mutation, like the one that gave man speech. It might be a mutation that could instill in some other species a powerful quality that we cannot even imagine. But then again, maybe we shouldn't be looking at Africa per se. Maybe we should consider the world's most advanced laboratories where new human beings are being made. Humans with telepathy or other powers hidden in the areas of the brain that we simply have yet to control. They might be people who look just like us and go unnoticed amongst us for a long, long time.